Welcome everyone, it's Frank here and another topic, a very good one. We're going to look at heavenly talks. It's a topic that touches the very heart of our faith, isn't it? About heaven talking to us. Why don't we hear more direct conversation or direct communication from our Heavenly Father? Is God distant or is something else at play? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of scriptures where God spoke in the past and explain what is happening today in our present lives and how he communicates to us today. Now, we talked about this in my last introduction to this series, and we're going to continue on. The silence of the Father. This is the first subheading. So many, many believers today and people who come into a relationship with God, look at the Old Testament and see Jehovah speaking almost all the time. Okay, and they wonder, why don't we hear his audible voice today? He spoke to prophets of old, from Moses to you name it. So why don't we hear direct audible words from him today? What about the Father? Why don't we hear from the Father? Now, you notice how I separated the two because many people have heard Jehovah in the past, but the Father, only a few have. In fact, Jesus says this very point that no one has ever seen the Father and that he only speaks through him. So we, we have to ask, well, what was happening in the Old Testament? And were these conversations that Jehovah was having, is, was he or is he the Father? Well, it seems that they're not. It seems that they're two different characters. So that's the first thing we need to acknowledge, which is sometimes a little bit difficult because Christianity has got us thinking that Jehovah is the Father. You know, he Christianity has got us believing that the Father is Jehovah and Jehovah is the Father and Jesus is the Father or Jesus is Jehovah. So this is the muddling up of identities about who's who. I believe when G in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, I believe Genesis chapter 1, we are hearing the Father's words and it's, he says, let there be light. Then we hear in Exodus 19, the law given to Moses by Jehovah, but that's not the Father. That is Jehovah making a covenant with the nation of Israel through Moses the mediator. Now it's interesting, when Jesus gets baptized, the Father speaks. He says, this is my son, my beloved son. Matthew 3.17 and there's a couple of other times where Jesus, where the Father speaks. The transfiguration is another time where they hear the voice of God. Now, many today feel that God is silent. The Father is silent. Now, why is that? The truth is, He has chosen a different way to communicate with us today. You know, in the first century, the Jews were asking, what is the work, the works that the Father or that God wants us to do? What is the works? Because see, under the old covenant that they were part of or the covenant that they were in at that time, they had 613 laws. Plus they had many other works that they were doing, which was, which was imposed upon them by the Pharisees and Sadducees. And you can imagine the... The question is seems legitimate. What is the works? And the response in John chapter 6 verse 29 by Jesus is one work. He said the work, not the plural works. He said the work the Father wants you to do is believe in him, the one who he sent. So to believe in Jesus. That is a work. That is the work that the Father wants you to do. Isn't that interesting? That's it. And then in John chapter 6, the same chapter, in verse 39 and 40, they said, well, Jesus says, well, this is the will of God. What is the will of God? Believe in the Son. So the work and the will of God the Father 
is one thing. That is believe in son, believe in Jesus. That's it. He's not communicating unless to you, unless you believe that. Believe in his way, right? And so that brings us to the next point. Where in Hebrews chapter 1, uh, verses 1 and 2, he ex clearly explains here, the writer, he says this, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. Now, he spoke through the prophets. His, his spirit, that is. But in those, he says, but in the last, these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So it's interesting. The father has given us who? Jesus. And he's given Jesus the authority to speak on his behalf. Right? So we understand that very clearly. That's what Jesus has done. He's got the authority. Now, everything the father wants us to know has already been revealed through Jesus Christ. He said so himself. Jesus did, that is. To the Pharisees, they weren't they weren't buying into who he was. And he said, listen, you don't have to believe me. Just believe my works. Look at the works. And then you'll know who the Father is. Interesting, right? You know, when he kept on talking about the Father. Why didn't he talk about Jehovah? Always, the Father this, the Father that. And they're saying, who's this Father? <laughs> and he says, you don't know the Father. Now, they were a covenant people with Jehovah. So obviously, he's not talking about Jehovah. He's talking about the father, another person. They did not have a clue. They even asked, how do we pray to this father? We don't know who he is, right? How do we pray to him? Do you remember that? So clearly the father wants us to know him through how and who, through whom? Through Jesus, because Jesus has revealed him. He says, I have revealed him to you. You know, Philip asked, well, show us the Father. <laughs> right? And what did Jesus say? Well, Philip, come on, man. I've been with you for three years now. You don't, you know, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Interesting, right? So the Father was revealed through Christ. So when we turn to the scripture and we hear Jesus and we hear what the apostles have said, because what Jesus has revealed to them, we are hearing the Father's voice. So now, question, why is that so important? It's because the Bible isn't just a collection of stories. It's the living word, Hebrews 4.12. Jesus, therefore, is called the Logos, or word. He embodies all wisdom, instruction, and love from the Father. So by focusing, therefore, on Jesus, the apostles and their teachings, we then are hearing, if you like, from the Father directly. So this is very important to appreciate. But we talked last time in the video about the role of the Holy Spirit. In John 16, 13, Jesus tells us that the Holy Spirit will guide us, or guide you, Jesus says, into all truth. So while we may not hear the audible voice, as we're saying, from heaven, what is from heaven that is leading us? Is it not the Holy Spirit? The Spirit's work or quiet work is very powerful, transforming, and it's doing so to our hearts and our minds to reflect Christ Jesus and the Father in our lives. So the Father's choice to remain silent, as it were, isn't a form of absence or rejection, no, but rather a method of growing us in faith. He wants us to lean on the Spirit who gives us understanding, comfort and guidance. It's the Holy Spirit who speaks internally, that nudge you get, allowing us to perceive heavenly wisdom, heavenly guidance. So yes, friends, heaven is now, even though many may not hear heavenly talking to us audibly, in the way we expect, we are already, though, seated, as we mentioned earlier, in heavenly realms with Christ, Ephesians 2, 6. This means heaven isn't just a future destination, it is a present-day reality. 
The kingdom of heaven is at work in our hearts and lives today. When Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you, you may recall that, Luke 17, 21, he was teaching that heaven's influence is already in at hand while he was there. Even in our natural senses, even though our natural senses at that time or now cannot grasp this. Now, why does this matter? Because if we focus too much on hearing a voice from the sky or some way audibly, we might miss that God is doing, we might miss what is God doing right now, today. So the kingdom of God grows when we live out heavenly truths in our daily lives, loving, forgiving and growing in grace. Here's point number five. Trusting in spiritual senses. Now, this is important as we grow in faith, as we mature in our faith. We have five spiritual senses, I guess. That's, I think we have five. We might have more. I don't know. But let's say five. And that allows us to experience heaven in a world of flesh, if you like, and trials. The Apostle Paul speaks of spiritual maturity, saying, but solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Hebrews 5.14 So I guess we've got to learn how or the senses that heaven, how, how the heaven and the spirit work in us. We've got to, we've got to learn to understand this and see the, the connection so that it can be a reality, right? It's not just a spiritual understanding, but then it becomes a reality in our war. So we can feel the freedom of God's grace when we live free of guilt. That's what God's grace does. It frees us from guilt. We don't have to feel guilty anymore. We shouldn't let men make us feel guilty if we're a saved child of God. We can hear the Holy Spirit affirm our identity as children of God. That's Romans 8.16. You know that scripture? Please have a look. We can see Jesus' work in the transformation of lives around us and in ourselves. We can also smell the sweet aroma of Christ's sacrifice as we gauge in worship. Isn't that what Paul said to the Corinthians? So we can taste the goodness of God and the Lord in our spiritual and even our physical provisions including healing something we will uh, delve into more and more we are really missing out on so much the work of the spirit in our lives today because of the false teachings that are out there in this world so why don't we hear the voice the father's voice like we might expect because he has given us everything we need through his son and the and the Holy Spirit and his spirit heaven is speaking through the word every single day and is guiding us to live out our life with these heavenly truths today so friends let's sometimes you hear people say that they heard God's voice audibly well I mean let people say what they want to say but we should tune into our spiritual senses of God that he has already given us, that are already in the scriptures. We can have faith in that and build our faith in his promises, what he says. We're invited into the he heavenly sanctuary, not just for the future, right? Not sometime just because world or religions tell you it's somewhere down the track and just sort of get through this life. No, no, we, we, we got it now. We got everything now. And we're just living out this life with everything, all these truths that set us free today. And so heaven is now. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Paul wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. And his spirit speaks to us in ways that transcend sound. So let's live that type with that type of faith. Thank you for uh, joining in and listening today. This message, I hope it finds you blessed. Feel free to share it with others if you like. 
and subscribe for more teachings on living out our freedom in Christ. Until the next time, friends, stay rooted in His Word and guided by His Holy Spirit. Thanks for listening.